TAC 2 of the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy. I am Melissa Browers, Deputy Director, and I will be your Masters of Ceremony for today's events. Please rise as you're able and remain standing for the arrival of Brigadier General Michael Garshak and the rest of the official party, the arrival of the cadets, the presentation and posting of our national state colors, our national anthem sung by Cadet Senior Airman Fisk and Cadet Senior Airman Rout, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the Invocation. Commissioner Grant, sir. Forward, march. Right turn.
Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave Ready, set. Left, face. Forward, mark. It is my honor to introduce Cadet Staff Sergeant Stemrich to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It is now my honor to introduce Cadet Senior Airman Mundell to deliver the invocation. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for watching over all these young men and women while we were facing a challenge these last five months here at the Academy. Lord, as we journey on in life, we ask that you guide us when we are at our lowest and show us how we can live in you, Lord. Lord, we ask that today, after graduation, you watch over everyone when we get back on the roads to go home and start the journey to life. Lord, thank you for showing all cadets here the second chance you wanted us to have. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Well done, well done. It is now my honor to introduce Cadet Bronco, Cadet Pokebro, and Cadet Small, who will welcome you with a round dance song. 
I will tell you a little bit about this real quick, is um, the two ladies asked if I would stay one evening when I was in the djembe, and uh, they said, we want to sing to you, deputy, and this is the first time this has ever happened. Um, anyways, it, it just brought me to tears, and it gave me goosebumps. So I said, you're going to be in commencement. That's what we're going to do. So they have been practicing um, since that time a couple months ago, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Isn't that awesome? I love it. I love my job, sirs, ma'am. <laughs> love my job. Thank you for your attention and respect. The cadets of IDYCA's class, 18-2, has worked hard to create their own legacy for the future classes to follow. You will hear about a few records and accomplishments from our speakers today. On a warm and summer day last July, we had 150 young men and women walk through our doors. Today, 129 of them are still here. Today's commencement is a great achievement for them, but also a milestone for our staff, stakeholders, and past cadets. Today, IDYCA graduates its 1,000th cadet, 103 to be exact. So thank you, Class 18-2, for pushing through adversity, overcoming hardships, and reaching for our goals, and taking us over that 1,000 graduate line. Class 18-2, I want you to remember, your town does not owe you recre recreational facilities, and your parents do not owe you fun. The world does not owe you a living. You owe the world something. You owe it your time, energy, and talent. In other words, grow up and stop complaining. Get out of your dream world and develop a backbone, not a wishbone. Cadets, I will leave you with a quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. The purpose of your life is not to be happy. It is to be useful, it is, it is to be honorable, to be compassionate, and to have some difference that you have lived and lived well. So congratulations, Class 18 TAC 2. I wish you the best, and thank you. <laughs> Idaho Youth Challenge Cadets, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce our director, Trevor Sparrow. I was telling these young men and women last night that they're pretty special. And one of the reasons why they're special, I don't know if they knew this or how many people know this, but you Challenge this year celebrates 25 years nationwide since its inception. And out of that 25 years, there have been 150 million 16 to 18 year olds that could have taken advantage of this program. And they joined the ranks of the 150,000 
in 25 years that have done so. So I think they deserve a round of applause. Very, very small percentage. Good afternoon and welcome to our ceremonies today. Cadets, you made it. Your family made it. Thank you, families and friends, for being here today. I want to personally welcome on stage State Superintendent Sherry Barra, Brigadier General Michael Garshak, Adjutant General of the Idaho Army National Guard, Major General uh, Retired Gary Sailors in the audience as well, former Adjutant General of the Idaho Army National Guard, Brigadier General Farron Swartz, Colonel Britt Vancher, Chief Master Sergeant Sid Brown, Collier Lipple, who is the Chief Executive Officer to the Adjutant General, Mr. Bicker Therian, Principal of IDYCA, Mr. Guy Bonner, Commandant of IDYCA, and Harv Nelson, Program Coordinator at IDYCA. It's also an honor to have on the stage representatives from U.S. legislatures, Idaho state legislatures, tribal officials, and local community and school district leaders. All of you provide invaluable support for the purpose and mission of the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy. Thank you. Another wonderful and most extraordinary group of people I'd like to thank are the staff at IDYCA. Each and every day, every one of the staff members I have the pleasure of working with truly give of themselves for something greater. They work sometimes with very little sleep and extremely exhausted to help each of the young men and women that walk through the doors of the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy. They do this because they care about the change that these young men and women are trying to realize for themselves, for their families, and for their future. I couldn't be more proud of our staff and all that they do every day. I'd like to recognize the staff at this time. Would all of the IDYCA staff please stand? Some of you are out there in the dark, I can't see you. There we go. Very, very talented group of individuals. I, I am very honored to work with all of them. To the parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, thank you for being, letting us be a part of your children's lives. They've learned so many things while being here. Give them a chance to prove to you that they have become responsible young adults with goals, great ideas, manners, yes, I said manners, and a true dedication to continue to strive to be a better person every day. We've grown very close to these young men and women, and it's tough for us to let them go. But they're ready, and we're very excited for them. To our wonderful class, 18 TAC 2, where do I begin? I promise it won't be long. 22 weeks ago, you embarked on a journey of a lifetime, and you started a journey that required tremendous amount of courage and resilience, searching for a change and dreaming of success. We're excited to see the great things that you'll do as you embark on your next journey. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that journey. On April 23, 1910, Theodore Roosevelt gave what would become one of the most widely quoted speeches of his career. The former president who left office in 1909 had spent a year hunting in Central Africa before embarking on a tour of Northern Africa and Europe in 1910. Attending events and giving speeches in Cairo, Berlin, Naples, and Oxford, among others. He stopped in Paris on April 23rd and at 3 p.m. at the Sorbonne before a crowd that included ministers in court dress, army and navy officers in full uniform, 900 students, and an audience of 2,000 ticket holders. Roosevelt delivered a speech called Citizenship in a Republic which among some would become to uh, be known as the man in the arena. In addition to touching on his own family history, war, human and property rights, the responsibilities of citizenship and France's failing birth rate, Roosevelt railed against crit uh, cynics who looked down at men who were trying to make a wor the world a better place and a difference for themselves. In summary, Roosevelt stated that the poorest way to face life was to criticize those who were trying. So in front of all of these officers and, and 
ministers in court dress, and well over 2,000 ticket holders, I bet you want to know what he had to say. Here's what he had to say. He says, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out the strong man's, how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there's no effort without error and shortcoming but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who I neither know victory nor defeat. I'm guessing he might have been a little surprised at his response. It's been quoted over and over again. Presidents uh, past his time have quoted that. And it's been used in sports, which I'm sure a lot of you can relate to, so I'm going to go there. Um, Mark DeRosa of the Washington Nationals would read it to himself before big games, before the Nationals faced, uh, uh, before the Nationals faced the St. Louis Cardinals in game four of the National League Division Series in 2012, DeRosa read it aloud to his teammates. He said about this infamous quote, that's a quote I've always gone back to. I go to that a lot, I really do. I've done it since college, I like it because people think they know but they have no idea what we're thinking from pitch to pitch. With our backs against the wall, I wanted to say something that brought us together. A little band of brothers, go out and fight, see what happens. I felt it was fitting. It fires me up when I read it. The team was victorious that night. So, class 18-2, I say to you, no one has any idea what you are thinking from pitch to pitch. During life, you will have your back against the wall. Remember the skills you've acquired over the last 22 weeks. Go out and fight. See what happens. You'll always come out victorious as long as you hold your head up high and keep trying. Stay in the arena. Congratulations, 18 Tac 2. <clears throat> At this time, I'd like to introduce uh, State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Sherry Ibarra. She has over 20 years of experience in all phases of education. I'm excited too, that's all right. <laughs> From classroom teacher to principal and at the administrative level. She was recently elected to her second term of office. She is passionate about educating our state's youth. Ms. Ibarra has a visited uh, the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy and is a strong supporter of our program. Please join me in welcoming to her, her to the podium. Well, good afternoon. I just want to take a moment to uh, thank General Garshak and Director Sparrow and Principal uh, Therian for asking me to be a part of this very special day and uh, the Academy's commencement. Today we honor 129 cadets who have made a brave and bold and life-changing decision to enroll in the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy and see their commitment through to graduation. I'm truly grateful to be here to celebrate this achievement with you cadets, your family, your friends, and the staff. Because like everyone here, I too believe in second chances. This is my third graduation ceremony and I'm thrilled to be here. I am a huge supporter of the Academy and to all of you cadets who have chose this path and have risen to this challenge. I'm pleased to welcome you to Lewiston because while I'm thrilled to count myself among the Academy's biggest fans, I am not a big fan of traveling up the mountainside to your home base in Pierce. <laughs> you see in my prior two speeches I shared with the cadets and the audience the story of my first introduction to your Academy and the journey up in the van in that long mountainside. 
my adventure in car sickness as I had to assume the position over the side of the mountain. <laughs> and the kindness that I experienced on that trip. I also shared that I was very glad that I did not give up and turn around and go back because believe you me, I was horrified and embarrassed. And if I had quit, I would have lost the opportunity to see your school in person and hear firsthand from the cadets why they chose this powerful program to transform their lives. That experience as your state superintendent of public instruction made me one of the academy's biggest fans. And today I also want to share with you a very personal connection with the class today. And honestly, I hope I can get through this speech today without tears. In prior years, I've attended this commencement ceremony, like I said, in my official capacity as your state superintendent. But today, I am attending as I feel like I am a family member. You see, one of today's graduates is a young man who I am so very proud of. And while I am his, not his mother, there's only one lady in this audience who does deserve that title, Desiree. I've often called him, affectionately, my second son. We first met when he was a bright-eyed middle school student, and he and my son became best friends and shared a passion for baseball, video games, and became constant companions. He was a fixture at our house, spending, yes, weeks at a time during summer breaks, and with the exception of last summer, he joined our family on summer vacations. And like many of you here, life circumstances began to change for this young man and he struggled and I began to worry and when you're a mom worry becomes a constant companion and when a child struggles your worries deepen and I was truly concerned about the prospects of his future like his mother and his family that are here today and his Mimi we feel truly blessed that the Academy was here for him. We're grateful he made the five and a half month commitment to the Academy and for the next 12 months will work closely with a mentor. I am over the moon that he will graduate today. I know how you must feel as parents and as family members. In fact, I'm proud of every single cadet here today who made the decision to enroll in the Academy, embrace the challenges that symbolizes the mountainside that you have called home. The challenges that led my second son and you all up the same mountainside are as unique as you are. For some, it's issues with the law, drugs, alcohol, maybe others, abuse, and some other, maybe some other type of difficulty that's interfered with success or in school or just life in general. But what impressed me when talking with you and learning from your staff and you all was that somehow in the midst of all of that, those circumstances, there was a spark that was still alive in each and every one of you. A spark to change, to walk a different path, to invest in yourself, to reach for something much better. You believed that you were worth another chance. You chose to come to the academy you stayed once you got here, and boy, I watched it all, and I know it wasn't easy. You made it through that tough two-week start. No contact with the outside world, no internet, and lots and lots and lots and lots of physical training. I know that that digital withdrawal had to be a shock to you. No phone, no computer, no texting, no internet no games, and that's the lifeblood of today's teen. And I suspect that you learn something most teens won't ever learn. That those things are nice to have, but far more important is the sacrifice that you gained. A healthy, fit body. A clear mind that's open for learning. A knowledge that, surface, that service to others is a powerful force for the good. You learn that with all, with all that PT, you're a lot tougher than you ever imagined. You learn firsthand that you don't need the right clothes or the right makeup or even a private shower or your own room to be successful. You did it. 
you discovered that when all those distractions are stripped away and your mind and body are healthy, you can accomplish great things. You've learned that you're smart, you're strong, you're resilient, and that people care about you, and yes, we do believe in you. You also experience the quiet satisfaction of serving others and working to build up communities that support you and this academy. You should be proud of all that you have accomplished and learned. I am proud of you, and so is every single person in this auditorium. To the parents and the families that are gathered here this evening or this afternoon, excuse me, must feel like a day so, not so long ago when you first welcomed these young men and women into the world for the first time. It was a time of joy and hope and dreams of a bright future. Today, we find that same joy of restoration and hope and dreams. The future for our cadets is bright indeed. To those in the audience who trusted the folks at the academy to guide your child to success, I commend you and I offer you my thanks. To the educators and the leaders at the academy who never gave up on these young men and women, personally, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. The staff has been relentlessly committed to their physical, academic, and personal success. So one more time, if we could just take a moment and applaud them. <laughs> Cadets, you have accomplished a lot. But now is the time for the adults in your life to help guide you into your next phase of your journey. My challenge to all the adults here is to follow the advice of noted educator Rita Pearson who said, every child deserves a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, who understands the power of connections and insists that they become the best that they can possibly be. We must support these cadets as they strive to stay committed to that living a healthy, disciplined lifestyle, taking the next steps to complete their education or go on to higher education or join the military or the workforce. For my part, I'm excited to once again stock up my refrigerator for my second son. And I'm here to cheer and support his success and every single one of you every step of the way. Cadets, as your superintendent, I will continue to share your success stories with others. And I will continue with academy leaders and state leaders to strengthen the workforce and education connections that support your progress and the success of other future cadets just like you. And it's my hope that we can replicate this program for other students across Idaho who need another path of success, just like you. Like you, they deserve an opportunity to succeed too. I have one last comment for you cadets today. Let's call it a little motherly advice. At some point in the future, you will be challenged. You'll be tempted to quit or stray from this path here today that you have chosen. I invite you to look back on this day and remember how success achieved through sacrifice and lots and lots and lots of hard work feels. It feels great. You did it. You earned it. And know with absolute certainty that when you strip away all the distractions, you are tough, you are smart, and you are up for any challenge that is handed to you. Just a few months ago, you made an important choice to climb a mountainside and change the entire path of your life, and you are a better person for it. When you started the program, you had no idea who your fellow cadets were going to be, who your instructors were, yet they stood with you. You were not alone. And going forward, trust your mentors. They'll guide you and you will not be alone as this journey continues. As you leave the mountainside and graduate today, you're again faced with an important choice. As I, enclose, as I close up here, I invite you to consider the quote, 
shared by a staffer at the academy. The people we surround ourselves with either raise or lower our standards. They either help us to become the best version of ourselves or to become a lesser version of ourselves. We become just like our friends and we all need people in our lives who raise our standards and remind us of our essential purpose and, our ch and they challenge us to become the best version of ourselves. Seek out this better you and in turn help others raise their standards. Congratulations to all of you. We're all so proud of you and I wish you all the best as you pursue a very bright future. Thank you and Merry Christmas. So I'm gonna tell a little story real quick. So when we were doing a um, rehearsal, I had to ask the cadets. I said, so I said, we have our keynote speaker and I said, it's Sherry Ybarra. And I said, does anyone know who she is? And there wasn't very many hands raised, ma'am. So they now know who you are. But I knew someone who would know your name. And so I said, Cadet Reynolds, who's Miss Barra? And he said, my best friend's mom. And I said, I, said, I can't introduce her like that. <laughs> so he's pretty excited to, to have you here, too. So today, we just wanted to um, uh, present you with a picture of the class and also with uh, your second son's um, autograph on it. So. Here you go. <laughs> so moving on, we're going to, uh, if you open up your programs and notice the web link um, to the IDEY Youth Foundation in your program insert. Scholarships are just one a part of how the foundation supports the academy and our mission to intervene and help the youth reclaim their potential. They also support incentive awards during the program, legacy projects that the cadets initiate, and many other academy needs. If you have a Facebook page, the foundation encourages you to like that page today to help boost our presence to Idaho youth who might need this opportunity. Our foundation is sincerely hoping that you will share it with our friends and family and ask them to share it too. The foundation has graciously awarded three of our current cadets $500 scholarships to assist them with their college endeavors. As I read your name, please come up to the stage to receive your scholarships from Brigadier General Garshak. From the GEMS flight, Cadet, St Cadet Staff Sergeant Valenzuela. From the Axman flight, Cadet Senior Airman Martin. And from the Scouts flight, Cadet Staff Sergeant Stapp. We are also excited that this year is the first year that we've decided to um, award scholarships to some previous cadets. And so today we are awarding a $500 scholarship to a former cadet. Elijah Lampa from class 17-2 is attending the University of Idaho right now and majoring in business. So he receives a $500 scholarship. Congratulations. We also have um, one more, but he's not here um, right now, so you can have a seat, sir. But it's Emilio Fisher, and he right now is enlisted in the U.S. Navy, and so he is um, right now in the Navy, So, but he will be returning, and so he has received a $500 scholarship, and his um, uh, he'll be attending the Spokane Community College for diesel mechanics. So let's give him a big round of applause.
So I'd like to introduce Michael Garshak, the Adjutant General for the Idaho National Guard. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, well, welcome. Welcome, everyone. You know, in, this is one of my favorite duties that I have as the Adjutant General is to be associated with the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy and participate in, uh, in these events. And you know, I'm not gonna rename all the distinguished visitors that we have that, uh, that uh, Director Sparrow said, but I just want to uh, you know, acknowledge the fact that we do have some significant uh, distinguished visitors here. Superintendent Ibarra has a tremendous speech. Thank you for coming today. Major General Saylor, uh, retired Adjutant General is here in the audience. You know, we have tribal leadership local, state, and national level leadership. Uh, and that's just indicative of what a big deal this is and what, a, what an accomplishment it is. So thank you for coming, everyone. I'd also like to welcome all the friends, all the family members, the mentors, and supporters of the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy. Uh, you know, thank you so much for the support that you give these cadets and to the Academy. This program is successful, and it's successful in large part because of all of you. Thank you for your attendance today as well. And, and I also want to take a moment to uh, personally and publicly acknowledge and recognize, uh, you know, Director Sparrow, Deputy Director Browers, Principal Therian, Commandant Bonner, you know, you and all of your first rate team of staff, cadre, counselors, and teachers, you continue to work miracles with these young men and women. And we couldn't have a more professional and dedicated team leading the academy. So I sincerely admire and appreciate all that you do to make this academy a success. Thank you, and well done. Thank you. And then to the cadets, I just want you to know that I'm truly inspired by you, by each and every one of you. You know, it gives me great confidence and comfort in knowing that the up and coming generation of Idaho citizens possess courage, resilience and determination and you're capable of taking on challenges able to overcome doubt and obstacles and power through to success so to, as far as i'm concerned the future is yours and i know that that future is bright so thank you and congratulations and now it's my honor uh governor otter uh, was was wanting to be here. This uh, institution is very near and dear to his heart. Uh, he wasn't able to make it, but it's my honor to read a letter from him. So uh, this is from uh, Governor Otter. Dear graduates, family, distinguished guests and staff, what we see today far exceeds the expectation that I had in the summer of 2007 when Major General Larry LaFrenz first brought the idea of the National Guard Challenge Program to me. We did not know what to expect, but looking at the statistics in Idaho and realizing that there were 5,000 or more kids dropping out of high school, we decided it was time to consider an Idaho Youth Challenge Program. At the age of 17, I figured I was as smart as I was ever going to be, so I quit school. There wasn't a National Guard Youth Challenge Academy back then to recognize and appreciate the value and potential that each and every person possesses. Fortunately for me, there was a place called St. Teresa's Academy, which is now Bishop Kelly in Boise, that took me back. At 19 years old, I was not only the tallest in my senior class, I was the oldest. But at the age of 20, I had earned my high school diploma and decided I didn't want to stop there. I wanted to go on. So I went to Boise Junior College, now Boise State, and then went on to the College of Idaho where I got my degree. We are celebrating the 1,000th 1, 1, student graduating from the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy at this commencement. I regret I couldn't be here with you but want you to know that I couldn't be prouder of what all of you have accomplished. I'm also very appreciative of your parents, family members, and friends who supported you in taking that first step for your second chance. To those that reached out to you with a caring heart and faith in your potential and value, I say thank you. I also have faith in the value of each and every one of you, and you haven't let us down. 
This school is a direct result of visionaries such as Major General Larry LaFrenz and Major General Gary Saylor and countless people from the Idaho Military Division who planned, worked for, and produced the academy responsible for the successful students we see here today. Congratulations to the 28th 18-2 graduating class for your many achievements and for exemplifying the real reason the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy succeeds class after class, year after year. Thank you to the director, the staff, the cadre, the mentors, the volunteers, past and present, who have given so much of themselves to make this day possible. As I reflect on my 12 years as governor of Idaho, the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy is one of my proudest accomplishments. As you look to the future, remember, fortune favors the bold. Be bold. As always, Idaho. Esto perpetua. C.L. Butch Otter, Governor of Idaho. And then now before I uh, turn the stage back over to uh, Deputy Director Browers, we have a special presentation. Uh, we wanted to, uh, we're always looking for ways to build and improve and develop the academy, and we wanted to take a step and acknowledge uh, recognition of the campus, and then also recognize a few of the individuals who have been so instrumental in making this a possibility and a reality that it is today. So, uh, me and Director Sparrow are going to unveil this. Yeah, that'll be placed on the campus. It establishes a. I didn't read it. <laughs> Want to get the date right? July first, two thousand and twelve. The official uh, uh, birth of the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy, and it has Governor C. L. Butch Otter and Major General Gary Saylor. So, there you go. Thank you. Every cadet was required to write a speech in English class. Seven were selected to compete in the speech contest. Three of them were awarded the prize of speaking today. It is my great honor to introduce Cadet Staff Sergeant Juarez. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Staff Sergeant Juarez. Last night, I was laying in my rack unable to sleep and I thought to myself how on earth did my squadron survive and to graduate I reached the conclusion that it was due to four simple yet powerful words which are resilience confidence determination and family we push through every day tired but stubborn stubborn because we grew up fighting different demons and this was one fight we weren't losing or alone in we were confident in who we were it took time, but we reached a new level of confidence that none of us had achieved before. Once we did, you couldn't have caught any of us with a jacked up collar, untucked boot laces, or any self-doubt about who we are. The word family stands out the most to me. I came to the academy with the mentality of, I will trust no one, that then transformed into family isn't always blood, and I'm there for my sisters and brothers. I didn't come to this academy as the only one who needed guidance in my life. So I stand here today in front of all of you, beyond proud and beyond honored, because today we are no longer cadets of the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy, but we are not graduates. Mala sangre, my mother spat at me with such acidity on an occasion I had once again let her down. This translates to rotten or bad blood. These two words sizzled, burned, and still remain in my heart and mind every day because somewhere in my family tree something went wrong. That something was me. 
I had brought shame to my family that envisioned a brighter future for me. I became a common stereotype. Those are teens associated with drugs and alcohol, teens associated with skipping school, and teens associated with not caring anymore. About eight months ago, I signed a posi position similar to all of you. I was watching my best friend graduate high school. She worked hard for that diploma, even though she didn't have the best life at home. I sat in my seat filled with admiration, but underneath there lay feelings of failure. That's not going to be me, I thought. I thought about my current grades and the only A I had was in fitness, and that's because I just show up for attendance and then leave. It sounds weird now, but I was ashamed to be myself. I was always seeking approval, and then I found them. My new best friends were named disrespect, untrustworthiness, and fatal substances. They led me to a constant clash of innocence versus sin inside my head. These three old buddies of mine corrupted me into thinking I was never going to amount to anything. I hated them because they were eating at me like parasites. But the only person that could have stopped them was me. If I take anything away from the academy, it's three main things. Teamwork, leadership, and to enjoy the little things in life. I've known leadership all my life, being the oldest of five kids. The leadership I learned here was different though. My siblings were predictable, but then I was first round flight chief and I was suddenly leading 37 teenage girls. <laughs> I had to learn 37 different languages because not everyone listens to authority the same way. That experience was frankly the most valuable because I not only got to bring my flight together, but learn what type of person I really was and now I'm blessed to be who I am. After my term of flight chief, I had to become a follower, which was hard for me. I'm a real competitive go-getter, and to take a step back was a challenge. But that's life. We all don't stay at the top of the chain. Even if we do, the real story rests in the mind and actions of the underdog. Teamwork makes it happen because you're going to have rough days, and you need to surround yourself with people who are going to tell you to get up keep pushing and brush those knees off. Lastly, is enjoying the little things in life. I was taken away from the real world and something as simple, something as simple as music made my day at the academy. I remember conversations with my gems and they would always, always turn into fantasies about food. <laughs> I am now going to go back home and have the freedom to choose the outcome of my day. I won't have the complete structure I had at the IDYCA, but now I have the tools to decide what is right and wrong, productive or not, and that I'm going to enjoy. Who am I going to be? A question that has swirled around in my head, day in, day out, morning to night. Now, through self-motivation, I've agreed to be what everyone said I couldn't be. I am no longer affiliated with the negative aspects of at risk, but now I flipped it. <laughs> Meaning those in a manager position or supervisor or anything above are at risk because I'm gunning for your job. <laughs> <laughs> I hope all of us do the same. Never shortchange yourself. All of you pushed through and invested time here so you can live a rich future. I personally, personally have a great fascination for the design of the human anatomy, which encouraged me towards the career path of becoming a forensic pathologist. This job roughly entails 13 years of education after high school. Five and a, five and a half months ago, I wouldn't have thought I was smart enough for that. Now though, I'm going to go back home to graduate with my class, go back to work, and build a steady foundation for my new life. My dad left a few years ago to drugs, and I found out on September 28th, <clears throat> he wants to come back into my life. It took a while to sort how I felt, but I decided to let him in, because I, I truly miss him. I'm going to show him that I went down the same path as he did, but look at who I am now. 
I went through hell and I came back with a fire in my soul. A fire that will smoke out the competition and continue to motivate me through life. In the end, I am very honored to graduate with all of you. Think about day zero and how far away December 15th seemed to be. Now look at what you're all wearing. The one above will never give you more than you can handle. For those of you that wanted to give up, I was there once, but think about what you will overcome in life. I love how in the Axman Creed it states, there is no such thing as a former Axman. All cadets, hold that in your heart about your flight. Stand at position of attention when you face challenges. Chin parallel to the deck, shoulders back, and proudly represent your name. Tell yourself there is no such thing as a former Mount Gem or Scout. Carry on a legacy no one your age can relate to. Remember the past and honor it. Live in the now and look forward to the many changes in the future, as my mentor once wrote me. I want you all to know this is not a goodbye, but just a see you later, because the executive can't wait to see how you all thrive in your new lives. Thank you all. I would now like to introduce Staff Sergeant Bernard from Scouts Flight. All right, Juarez well, did really good. That was amazing. Um, I'm probably going to cry the whole time, so be ready for that. Uh, good afternoon, friends, family, staff, and cadets, and. Welcome to the commencement of Class 18 Tech 2 of the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy. My name is Stetson Bernert, but while here at the Academy, my name is simply Cadet Bernert. I'm incredibly pleased and excited to be here today, and even more thrilled to have the opportunity to speak in front of all of you. I would like to start by sharing a quote with you that means a lot to me. I've kept it in my mind throughout the program, on my bad days as well as my good days. It goes like this. We've come so far, now here we are. We made it through the night. I know we will be stronger still. Everything will be all right. It's by Weezer. Um, I really enjoy that band, but that quote means more to me than it just being a good song. I'd like to elaborate on those lines and relate them to my experience and the experiences of other cadets while here at the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy. We've come so far. Those four words have never been truer than they are right now on this day. Every single one of us has come way farther than we thought we could. Every cadet that is here today showed up on day zero and completed the program. We all made mistakes and we all achieved spectacular things. But most importantly, we didn't give up and we pushed through until the end. The next sentence of the quote is, now here we are. And look at that, here we are. I remember day zero, that first night, lying in my bunk, staring out the window at the purple and pink clouds, watching the sunset, and bawling my eyes out. I remember hearing my fellow scouts all around me doing basically the exact same thing. I vividly remember whispering to myself, I can't do this. Why am I even here? Now, here I am at commencement, five and a half months from that very day. And you know what? Not only did I prove myself wrong and answer my own question, but so did everyone else. We can do this, and we did. I'm here because I needed to make a change in myself so that I could be the best person I can be. And I did. Moving on to the next sentence, it says, we made it through the night. A man I deeply respect once told me, there is nothing that will happen today that you can't handle. In my mind, I like to think of these past 22 weeks as the night. When I fell off the face of the earth and half of my friends had no idea where I even went, I also like to think of the night as the hardest part of each day. The night is when our fears and our mistakes come out of hiding, when they show themselves for what they really are. The Idaho Youth Challenge Academy brought out my fears and my mistakes, shining a big bright light on who I really was. At first I was scared of the night. I was scared of what lurked in every corner and within the shadows of my mind. I didn't want to face who I truly was. The Academy helped me to defeat those fears and erase those mistakes just as it did for all of the other cadets graduating today. 
I can now say with confidence that the night is through, the sun is rising, and we are all better because of it. I know we will be stronger still. After today, all of us are going to go back home. We need to be strong. Some of us may want to leave more than others, and some of us would like to stay a little longer. Either way, we need to be brave. We need to be courageous. Just because the residential phase is over doesn't mean this way of life is over. Once we're all back, life will throw challenges towards us like never before. All of us have new skills, knowledge, and abilities that we want to apply in our lives. We are essentially new and improved people being thrown back into a world of old and dilapidated circumstances. It will be harder than ever to return home and stay on a path towards success while you're surrounded by a forest of ruin. So, here I am, warning all of you right now to not return to the world you once knew, a world of chaos and failure. I know it will be tempting, and many past cadets have fallen back into that world. Instead, I want you to return to that world with confidence, courage, and strength. And the last sentence of the quote states, everything will be all right. Today's the day, the day we've all waited for since July 14th. It's the day we need to come home, whether you want to or not, whether you're scared or not. It's here, and there's nothing you can do about it. And that last sentence holds nothing but truth because everything will be all right. Cadets, go home. Be yourself. Dress the way you want, eat the food you want, sleep in your bed. I don't care because I know for sure that's exactly what I'll be doing. <laughs> Make the right decisions. Stay motivated and stay dedicated. Do your very best in life. Always remember what happened here at the IDYCA. Treasure the good times, the friendships you forged, the lessons you learned, and the mistakes you made. Most importantly, never allow yourself to send those fond memories, newfound friendships, life lessons, or mistakes into oblivion. Please, don't forget who you have become. I'd like to close by addressing a few other things. First, I want to thank everyone, cadets, my squadron as a whole, for pushing yourselves to the end believing in each other and yourselves, even when you wanted to give up. My teachers, for showing me that I can do great things, that we can all do great things, and that all of us are truly smarter than we believed we were. My tech sergeants, for believing in me and my flight. On the good days and especially the bad ones, for showing up to work every day and dealing with the craziness that ensued regularly. But above all, thank you for being honest with us. You all showed us that the world sucks, that sometimes we all have to do dumb stuff, and that's just how life works. You prepared us for the real world. In many ways, that's the most important life lesson that we learned here at the Academy. My family, friends, and loved ones. Thank you for supporting my decision to come here and better myself for loving me no matter how long I was gone or how difficult it seemed to be while I've been here. And this is where it's happened. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, I want to thank my fellow scouts. My brothers, I lived with you guys for 155 long hard days. Each and every day, despite our hardships and terrible moments, you all proved to me how courageous, how courageous we really are. I want to thank you for pushing me to do my best and being there for me when I was feeling the most alone. Most importantly, learning how to work as a team, as one unstoppable force. Nothing means more to, the, more to me than the improvement that I've witnessed within my flight throughout the course of this academy. I am exceptionally proud of each and every one of you, and I can honestly say that I would truly miss you all. Now, I've said many things today, but I want to conclude by sharing this with all of you. I came to the academy as nothing more than a sad excuse of a boy. I had dreams, but no goals. I had values, but none of them were good. I had good intentions, but my actions showed otherwise. Not only did it disappoint my parents, 
but I took advantage of their literal blindness. <laughs> I created a reality where I was the bad guy and I didn't care if I was hurting my family in the process. Then, I heard about the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy. Now, I have goals, real goals, and accomplishments that I'm working towards. I have values, honorable traits that I will live by, actions, honest behavior, no more broken promises. After today, I'm here for my family, my parents, and my sister. I am no longer a boy because I am now on the path to become a man and moving onward to success. All I have is the Academy and all the people here to thank for that. Thank you again. Have a lovely day. And for all my fellow cadets, a wonderful future as well. Thank you. <laughs> and now I would like to introduce Staff Sergeant Tomlinson from the GEM slide. Hello families, cadets, dignitaries, and staff. I'm Cadet Staff Sergeant Tomlinson, and I would like to take you all back to the day that made me question what kind of person I truly was. It was June 16th, 2018, a day that I will never forget, my epiphany moment in life. My younger sister Serenity, also known as Cadet Tomlinson, had just completed the entire program which resulted in her becoming a strong, inspiring young woman. I kept asking myself, how was her success possible? How does she look so good? I had realized she knew what she wanted and went for it. The day of her graduation, I watched my sister walk across the stage in Boise, Idaho, with her head held high and with a driven purpose for life. I knew I wanted the same. I guess you could say I was a little jealous of how incredibly beautiful she looked. The day of her graduation was absolutely unforgettable. That day, I could feel the cadence of the cadets in the pit of my stomach. Chills rushed all the way up and down my body. My heart started to race and pound out of control to the powerful sound of the cadet creed a model that cadets live by while attending the IDYCA. Every single cadet I laid eyes on glowed. They looked incredible, especially my sister who held my attention. She was without a doubt showing her big sis up. At that moment, reality had hit me in the face. I needed to do something about who I had become. For those of you who don't know, the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy is on a mission to intervene and reclaim the lives of 16 to 18 year olds. Cadets who have not fully realized their ability to succeed come from bro broken homes and families, and some who are even dropouts, and those who simply just want to earn, an e earn high school credits or receive a GED. My purpose to attend IDYCA was much more than just a thought, an idea, or a court suggestion. I looked at this academy as a true second chance at life, a second chance to be the woman, as well as the mother, I've always needed and wanted to be. <sighs> I am considered a teen mom in most areas of the world. In fact, the term teen mom suited me very well. I acted as if I didn't have any responsibilities at all, just like many teen moms. In fact, I was obsessed with partying, drinking, smoking, and making my friends my main focus and priority. I was living the true self-indulgent teen life, which should have quickly ended for me at the age of 16 years old. My daughter should have been my entire world. She should have been the reason I drew breath. She became my inner strength, my motivation, but I had absolutely nothing to offer her. I let her down. 
until the day came when I realized that who I was does not determine who I can be, but most importantly, who I know I can become for my baby girl. I decided to grow up and take responsibility for once in my life, which was far from easy for me to do. Regardless, I packed my bag, I packed my things in a black duffel bag, I loaded up in the car, kissed my lily goodbye, <sighs> swallowed my last little bit of pride, and headed to Pierce, Idaho. Overwhelmed is an understatement for the amount of nerves I felt flowing through my veins on day zero. I kept trying to make excuses as to why I didn't believe that I was strong enough for all of the structure I would encounter in the next five and a half months. Not only was I filled with bucket loads of anxiety and sadness, but so was every other cadet I saw on that day. The most painful experience after an emotionally overloaded, exhausting, and stressful day came the first night when it was time for Rack's post. As I laid on my pillow, staring at the ceiling, enduring the dreadful, unbearable days ahead, a domino effect began to form. Little by little, the entire Gems Bay was soon flooded with tears. Every gem in the bay was crying, most envisioning the same terrible feeling I was. It was painful and heart-shattering, but something clicked in my head while all of our pillows filled with salty tears. That maybe I'm not the only one hurting that there's 129 other girls and boys wanting to be home, in their beds, and with their families. This was when GEMS, Axe, and Scouts became a part of who I am today and who I wanted to become. The girls all soon found out that I was a mom and the oldest one in the bay, but they still cared for me. In fact, many of them looked up to me and asked me for advice, and soon I became the mama bear of the Gems Bay. <sighs> we all have grown in our own special way. Many of us are now strong, passionate, courageous leaders as well as followers. All of the cadets here today took on a huge challenge. They accepted whatever battles they had to face to be successful. We did more than just rise above, lead the way, and set the standard. We have put in the work to reach our goals day in and day out. We stayed focused, learned self-discipline and bearing, kept positive on days when we wanted to give up. We became warriors who fought our own battles, and in the end, we won. The gems, acts, and scouts are all ready to conquer the world and show everyone what a gentleman and a classy lady truly looks like. Your past does not define who you are as a person. What defines who you are is what you do with the cards dealt to you. Many of us hit rock bottom, and most of us didn't know how or if we would be able to get back up. <sighs> We've all overcame our own internal misery and came out 10 times stronger than we were before. This program is so much more than just a second chance. The staff, the teachers, and cadre, they all strive every day to make us better individuals. They live, breathe, and take pride into the work they put into helping us grow so that we can be outstanding citizens as well as good influences to those in our community. They come to work not just because they get paid, but because they truly love their jobs and enjoy what they do. The amount of time and work they all put into helping us change our lives means more to me than I thought it would. I'm beyond grateful and blessed to have met and learned many skills from the staff at IDYCA. This opportunity for a second chance at a better future has been the most extraordinary and unforgettable experience of my entire life. The struggle and hardship was worth every second. We are all bound for greatness, bound to overcome all obstacles in our way. Failure to act ends up being the biggest failure of all. I will always believe that in life, success travels in the company of very hard work. There are no tricks. 
There's no easy way, you just have to do it. This is our reality. We are all going back into the world as if newly released butterflies breaking out of our cocoon. We are the class of 18 TAC 2. Now let's begin our journey to greatness, reach for the stars, and take on all troubles that come our way head on. We are one team, one fight. And moving forward, we will face our weaknesses and worries and fears while we take on the world, always reaching for our goals. Way to go, squadron. We made it. Thank you. So that's just three of the 129 speeches that we get to listen to and that we get to pick from. So if you can imagine the stories that we hear every day, it's amazing. So all of these cadets also have the help of their adult volunteer mentors who give of their time and love to serve as their coach, friend, and accountability partner in the achievement of their PRAP goals. Here to recognize these volunteers and present some mentor awards is our program coordinator, Mr. Harv Nelson. Thank you. Well, Class 18 Deck 2 has set some records. In addition to the largest graduating class we've ever had, Idaho Youth Challenge Academy staff now can literally, literally say, We've seen it a thousand times. <laughs> Class 18-2 has achieved a historical milepost. And we expect, cadets, we expect you to keep making history. You have future successes out there. We've all heard the cliche, we are pulling for you. Cadets, over your lives, many have been pulling for you. Your parents, your family, teachers, your community members, all have taken their turn and still pull for you. Cadets, part of that saying is the implication is a desire that you learn to pull for yourself. The Idaho Youth Challenge Academy staff have taken our shot to help you see you can pull for yourself. As you make good choices, it benefits everyone. Someday you'll be able to see a thousand good lives that your choices help and influence. Yes, we've seen it a thousand times. Young men and women looking us in the eye and saying, we've got this, we're ready, we can take the next step. We've earned those credits, we've learned the skills. We're ready to take a hold of tomorrow and pull for the future. Often in a military unit, they'll compete with each other with a tug of war. We all know the drill. A few are selected. They raise their hand, we can do it. They represent their unit. Those are chosen and they choose to grasp the rope, pull for their team. They put their backs into it, tighten their grip and pull. Now the strongest teams do not always win. The ones that prevail are often the tug of war team that never gives up. These teams often hear the rest of the unit hollering, Pull, pull, pull. Don't quit, don't let go. And the team, the individuals, grab a hold. They pull past the pain, the desire to let go until they prevail on those counting on them. Cadets, there are many counting on you. You've been pulling 22 weeks. You chose to hang on. You were the few that chose not to quit when you felt like it, when you wanted to. You work past that. Now opportunity waits. Years from now, we'll still be pulling for you. Keep it up. Don't let go. Don't quit. Cadets, the future is yours to hang on to and move forward. We've seen it a thousand times. A record number of 129 cadets graduating required a record number of mentor volunteers standing behind them. 
Mentors are a steady, active voice of encouragement. They encourage you to pull. Don't let go. More than 129 men and women, volunteers, with no biological connection to these cadets said yes. Often to a young person saying, will you help me? Will you help me change the direction in my life and help me keep that change in the future? Each mentor has completed training, background checks, interviews, and have made a commitment to that young person for their future. Cadet, your mentor volunteers have been pulling for you throughout the residential phase with your encouragement, with letters, shared hope, strength, guidance, and mentors will continually encourage you, having their way of saying, keep it up, don't let go, keep pulling forward. Now as post-residential phase begins, mentors will continue to be one pulling for you and help encourage you to hang on, complete your goals, achieve your future. We have many mentors in attendance today from past and present classes. I'd like to raise the lights, and if you are a mentor of any cadet, Idaho Youth Challenge Academy grad or here, would you please stand up, let us recognize you. Thank you. Now coordinating the mentor volunteer program is a huge effort from application to certification. The Idaho Youth Challenge Academy staff member who accomplished this task and coordinates these remarkable volunteers is our post-residential coordinator, Dan Drover. <laughs> to honor all mentors, Dan will help us recognize five from this cycle who have personified the mentor commitment. Mentor, when your name is called, please join your cadet at center stage to be recognized. Our first mentor is John Blackburn. John is a mentor to scout cadet Selbach. Come on up, Selbach. But Cadet Selbach is John's third cadet. John attended all three mentor days with Cadet Selbach and all the mentor days with his previous two cadets. John has a great record of keeping the academy informed with what their cadets are doing and how they're achieving that post-residential action plan. Thank you, John. And the gems, the award goes to Michelle Carter, mentor to Cadet Knutson. Michelle is unable to attend today's event, so Cadet Knutson, where are you? Come on up. <laughs> Cadet Knutson, you are charged to hand deliver this award to your mentor. Michelle wrote her cadet well above what is required in the program, attended all three mentor days. She's a huge supporter of the program. She's also has a memorial scholarship that she often gives in memory of her precious cadet who lost her life in a vehicle accident, but still remains in our hearts. Good. So we'd like to honor two Axman mentors, cadet, or I'm sorry, Axman mentors, Mark Turner, mentor to Cadet Hansen and Tyler Mor Tanner Morales, mentor to Cadet Shearer. These, these two gentlemen, just proud as to, can be. Both mentors before you were previous cadets of Idaho Youth Challenge Academy and graduated with class 14-1. They were both instrumental in getting their cadets to even attend the academy and keeping them here to finish. They both helped the academy at orientations and other events to help those see what a tremendous change in life 
the Youth Challenge Academy can be for a young person. We have a special award, mentor award today, going to Sky Taylor. Sky, Sky has been a mentor to six cadets, three Mountain Gems and three Axemen. Mentor over six of the la or ten classes. So she even asked if she can have more than one per class. No, you can only have one per class. <laughs> She'd been to nu numerous mentor days, in the double digits anyway, we lost count. She always seems to bring the snow and rain to the service to community. Uh, <laughs> and John thinks it always rains at Dale Reservoir. <laughs> but uh, she brings along maybe the snow and rain, but also an infectious attitude. Great advocate for the Youth Challenge Program, Sky is changing her community by volunteering to hold up and, and encourage one young person at a time through the academy. Thank you. Please show your appreciation to all our mentor awardees and all the mentors again. Please welcome Commandant Guy Bonner to share some class and individual achievements during the residential phase. Thank you. All right, I would like to thank uh, Brigadier General Garshak, guest speaker, Superintendent Sherry Yubara, uh, VIP special guests, and all the family, friends, and loved ones who are in attendance today. And I normally, that's usually like my little intro in most of all of these, you know, thanking the people and the VIPs, but you know, as you see them over here, and you see the mentors that stood up and the special guests, everybody that's here, you know, without them, we're still in 14 TAC 1 struggling trying to make it happen. And it's really, really cool to see all the impact that they put in their lives. And I think that's awesome. So thank you. So, yeah. <laughs> We couldn't clap our hands enough for them. <laughs> Just won't be able to do it. So the cadets here before you have worked very hard and have much in themselves to show for it. Pride, confidence, appearance, their presence. And I've always told the cadets that I am not concerned with them being the best. Rather, I'm concerned that they do their best. That's all that mattered to me. They should strive for perfection, knowing it cannot be attained, yet striving nonetheless. Physically and mentally, they have pushed themselves, so at this point I'd like to talk about a few of their accomplishments. PT, we do that a lot. You probably heard that in the next room there a little bit. We, right to the very end, we're PT in. Mornings, evenings, hikes, free time in the bay, consequences, right, right? Pretty much anywhere there's a moment to work out, we work out. And in doing so, each of those moments all add up to create the changes cadets see in their physical life. Please hold your applause till I am finished reading the stats for the whole squadron. But we'll start with the gems. Uh, when they first came in as a team, they were able to do about 374 push-ups. That's what they could do as a team. And when they left here, they were at 971 was their final. They, they went up that far. It's just crazy what they do. Their mile run was an average of 11 minutes and 40 seconds, and they trimmed that down to a 903, which is almost three whole minutes. It's just, they run a lot. <laughs> So with the Axemen, they came in with push-ups and together they could put out a total of 1,134 and they ended up with 1,963 push-ups as a team. Their mile run went from a 9.53 down to a 7.02. And the Scouts came in with 1,432 push-ups together as a team and left with a 2,178 push-ups <laughs> together. Yeah, right? And then their mile run went from a 9.09 down to a 7.17. So that was outstanding what they did there. So give them a hand. <laughs> now with that comes the shedding of some weight, of course. And uh, they do quite a bit of that. The squadron itself, as a whole, lost 1,177 pounds together. <laughs> so that's an extreme amount of weight. They did just great. And I know they, they just feel better for it every day. Uh, breaking that down with the gems, uh, some of the ones who lost the most, of course, a lot of them lost some. But we'll, I'll just go over a few. 
Angel lost 28 pounds from the gyms. Bronco lost 23. Flores lost 27. And Gallegos lost 24 pounds. From the Axemen, we had Bauer, who lost 60 pounds. Buster lost 50 pounds. Purvis, 37 pounds. And Warren, 53. And from the Scouts, we had Ked Walleter. He lost 38 pounds. Friday, 42. Small, 38. And Watkins lost 39. But our biggest loser of the squadron was actually the second most that we've ever had in all of our classes. And that is Cadet Slifer from the Scouts. He lost 75 pounds while he was here. That type of stuff gives them a new lease on life and I, I just really hope that they continue that because not f just physically but mentally, that, it's just a lot for a person. So, you know, you see those people out there running in the mornings at 5 a.m. and you're thinking, oh, they love doing that. No, <laughs> no, the alarm goes off, yeah, it's tough, but once you get in it, it's great and they've seen that. Other things they do here is a service to community. So while at the ac academy, these cadets provide service to the surrounding communities of the IDYCA. Some of the academies include working with senior homes, clearing trail for the Forest Service, providing service to fish hatcheries, donating blood to the Red Cross, and providing other miscellaneous services to small communities around. The lights here in Liston, they help put those up. So some of you might have seen the lights down in Liston. A really cool show if you want to go down there at night. Awesome. The cadets help to do that. Just great stuff that they do. On the way here, I talked to him about looking off to the side of the road. It was covered with snow, but I asked him how many had, had went and helped pick up on the side of the road because we've adopted a two mile stretch outside of our town. And they were all, oh yeah, yeah. I said, how many of you done it twice? I'm like, oh yeah, plenty of us. And I was like, how many of you were astonished at how much extra stuff was there from the last time you came? And I, that changes a person. They're just like, you can't even see why it makes sense to throw something out the window. And I think that's an awesome thing that our service to community provides for these cadets and what they provide for the communities. This is an important aspect of the challenge program and one cadets take them w with them when they leave. And we've even had a past cadet that was uh, going to school, working a job, and volunteering many hours each week at a local VA home. Uh, he was pretty awesome. It's amazing to see that passion carried on. This class obtained our highest amount of hours provi by providing over 6,000 hours of service to the communities around. Just amazing. As for their accomplishments, there are many. I just speak about a few. But you should all be proud of your cadets. They completed something that many of their peers lacked the fortitude to even attempt. And here they are. I know I am proud of each and every cadet alike. Every single one of them. They did not come out of the fire unscathed, but yet have changes in their life to show for it. They have earned the break they are about to enjoy this Christmas and New Year's. But don't let them forget that after New Year's, it's time to saddle back up, get back to life, working hard and creating more moments where they can enjoy the fruits of their labors. Now I talked with the cadets already last night, probably saved you all at least 25 minutes. But uh, so we already had a talk about uh, working hard for what you get. It's all right, all right to get help but wanting to be the major contributor in that, right? I don't ever want you to forget that. Be somebody who gives back, somebody who's a producer, right? And never settle for that scapegoat in life that's out there. There's many of them. It's so tempting to sit there and say, oh, well, this is the reason I can't succeed. No, you are the only reason. There is always a way. You may have to work harder than the person next to you, but you can still do it, and the chance is there, so keep at that. Now, cadets, are we ready for this? Mouths! Shut up. Ears! Open! Eyeballs! Clear. All right, parents, that tip is free. <laughs> Use it as, as much as you want. Merry Christmas. With that, how many of you cadets put your hand in the air? A show of hands, not a show of mouths, is what I like to tell them. A show of hands, not a show of mouths for who has known a cadet who has come here before. Raise your hand. Pretty cool. Put your hand down. Thank you. With that, you have an obligation. You have an obligation to be that cadet for somebody else. We had a couple over here mentoring. 
I just love those guys. You're awesome. <laughs> You're awesome. They're doing more than I did at their age, that's for sure. I was just marking time, maybe, we'll, maybe doing rear march. You have that obligation. You have to do something about it. You have to be that impact in somebody else's life. You have to give back. All right. There's something interesting about challenge because when people hear about it, they say, oh, that's a neat idea. Boy, I think that's a pretty cool thing. You know, that impacts people's lives. That's awesome. But when you're touched by it, whether it be some over here that are mentoring, whether it be family, friends, when you're touched by it, it's different. You have a passion and you just can't help everything. You just want to tell everybody about challenge. You want to do everything you can to help. You want to come back and uplift the new cadets. And I want you to to remain in that mindset. So with that, cadets, I again commend each and every one of you on your hard work and perseverance that placed you here today. Remember it is the decisions you made and the actions you took in every hour of every day that led to this moment. It is an accumulative concept. A little can add up to a lot over the course of time. And remember this, if you keep doing what you've always done, you're always gonna get what you've always gotten. It isn't gonna change. So stay focused, stay the course, Godspeed. Thank you, Commandant Bonner. The goals these young men and women are striving to reach would not be possible without their continued improvement academically. Please welcome our principal, Mr. Bickertharian. We'll be done in a couple hours. I got a lot to say. <laughs> General Garshak, Mrs. Yabara, Dr. Garrett, Director Sparrow, distinguished guests, parents, and staff, it gives me great pleasure to conduct this certificate ceremony for the 10th class of the Idaho Youth Challenge Academy. Prior to today, 874 Idaho students have walked across the stage at IDYCA. Really, in about 10 minutes, our thousand third graduate will receive recognition for program completion. What an amazing five years changing lives and improving our state. These 129 young people stuck together and dedicated themselves for 22 weeks working the program and applied themselves to improving in each of the eight core components. As pre principal, I affirm that they have all been successful in this difficult task. Candidates are tested on the TABE, the test of adult basic education, in week two, and again as cadets by week 21. This class showed an average growth of 1.9 school years in 22 weeks. Please keep in mind that a full school year is 36 weeks and we expect one year of growth in 36 weeks. This is almost two years of growth. The average grade equivalency on the pre-test was eighth grade, third month. And the post-test, it was 10th grade, second month. The average GPA on entry was 1.65. Their accumulative GPA now is 2.43. Their GPA for academy courses is 3.31. Over 70% of today's graduates had an accumulative GPA of below 2.0. Many of them below 1.0 when they enrolled. Today that number has been reduced to just 11% and just 2% are below a 2.0 in academy classes. 16 cadets are graduating with a 4.0 in their academy classes. <laughs> cadets had an opportunity to earn up to 14 credits on their, in their time on campus. 14 credits is, the equivalent, is equivalent to a full school year accomplished in 22 weeks. I'm excited to report that of the 1,806 credits available, 1,800 were earned. <laughs> I 
This doesn't include the 21 credits that were earned before school for, by our high school graduates that attended school with me before school. In addition to completing the rigorous residential program, we have 17 cadets earning their high school diplomas today and 18 more that earned their GED while they were at the academy. Besides these remarkable educational accomplishments, the cadets have made many significant strides toward responsible citizenship. They have worked diligently accomplishing many soft skills that are difficult to measure, but equally important. They registered to vote, registered for the selective service, participated in a stressful mock interview process, and many have secured employment, college acceptance, they are physically fit and ready for their future. Initially, we thought we were going to have another speaker, so we were to cut our speeches short. Luckily, we had one cancel, so I got to write a little bit more in here. As I pondered the words of advice I would offer the cadets of 18 TAC 2, I remembered June of 1977. I was a soon-to-be 16-year-old, and I was attending Cougar Cage Camp at WSU. George Raveling was the coach at the time, and he gave a motiv motivational speech to campers, and that speech has influenced me for 42 years. It was entitled, If It's To Be, It's Up To Me. A nice, catchy mo motto, and his delivery was embedded into the mind of a very impressionable 16-year-old. Cadets, I want you to seriously consider those words. If it's to be, it's up to me. Over the tw past 22 weeks, you have struggled and discovered many things about yourself you did not know before. At times, you blamed others for your challenges, and you really didn't understand your successes. You can do many things that you would have never have attempted five and a half months ago. Your success going forward is up to you. The cards you are dealt are irrelevant. You can manage your money. You can apply for jobs and professionally interview. You can understand complex science experiments. You can understand our complex governmental processes. You Yes, all 129 of you, not just the three that were up here, can deliver a coherent speech to a group of your peers. You can read for pleasure as well as for knowledge. You can certainly solve complex mathematical problems. You can save a life with CPR. Most of you can even lead an unruly group of teenagers. And on top of that, you can follow when that's what's required. Apply the knowledge and skills you've gained, and you can do it. Success is a choice, and the choice is yours. All the choices you make have consequences. Some good, some bad. And your sex success is your fault, just as your stumbles are your fault. Own it, learn from it, good and bad. Cadets, if you get eight hours of sleep, exercise regularly, eat right, abstain from harmful behaviors, show up and do the work, there's nothing you cannot accomplish. At this time, with the help of Superintendent Ybarra, General Garshak, and the rest of the official party, we will issue certificates and diplomas by flight. Please hold your applause and cheering until the entire flight has been recognized. We're getting there. Almost done. Yeah. <laughs> From the Mountain Gems flight. Receiving her GED. Summer Adair.
Nancy Alencantar Rodriguez. Receiving her GED, Jasmine Anderson. Amanda Angel. Leandra Bell. Receiving her GED, Amber Brisson. Samantha Bronco. Charlotte Chuckets. Jocelyn Fisk. Go to the world that I ain't ashamed how I came from nothing. Nope. But like a seed planted in concrete, I became something I rose up. Nancy Flores. So tell the world that all time say all time is right now. No more locked in prisons, no Mackenzie young father Gallegos. Committed, gotta stay focused when it's God given. See the talents is God given, gotta use it right when God give it. This God blow, gotta go. Noelia Gonzalez. Can I touch the world with one song? Let my thoughts travel this go. Let me hit the soul of every living person with the village things that I wrote. Natani Hernandez. See, that's one reason I'm chose. When I'm at the top, they try to take me out. Tell my family love for sure. Let them know. Receiving her diploma, Let Kayla Let Jenkins. Know. Let them know. Let them know. Let them know. Let them know. Aliyah Juarez. Our time is right now. Receiving her diploma, Annika Knudsen, who was also sworn into the National Guard. Receiving her diploma, Sarah Lamke. They try to pin us down, try to knock us out, but couldn't knock the hustle. This how I sound when you start with Receiving her diploma, Taylor Lindsay. Like now they can see how I came out triumphant, yeah. This hard, yeah. Tell them again, this is hard, yeah. Tell them again, Faith time. Longest. So rise up, we got no fear. To the top, it's our destination. My whole life been preparation for right now. Right now, time is right now. Can I touch the road? Savannah Mallory. Let me hit the soul of every living person with the village things that I wrote. Only truth come out when I speak. See, that's one reason I'm chosen. When I'm at the top, they try to take me out. Tell my family. Giselle Marquez. Let them know, let them know, let them know. Let them know. Lilia McGee. Let them know, let them know, let them know. Our time is right now. Trinity McPherson. Our time is right now. Right, right, right now. Our time is right now. Right, right, right now. Rebecca Minga. Our time is right now. Our time is right now. Our time is right now. Daniela Munoz. Natalie Navarro. Let him know, let him know, let him know. I see the way. Let him know. Quenaya Norris. Let him know. I see the way. Kaylin. Pokey Bro. I'll show you the way out. Receiving her GED, Christina Porter. Here's the way out. Charisma Ramirez. Isabel Romero. I'll be the last one standing. Aliyah Salinas. Natalia Sanchez. I'm a fighter like Rocky. Put your flag on your back like Ali. Yeah, I'm the greatest, I'm stronger. Receiving her GED, Sky Tomlinson. Miracle Eubens. I, I am invincible, unbreakable, unstoppable, unshakable. 
Jasmine Valenzuela. Vanessa Velasco. And receiving her GED, Raylin Wells. From the Axe Flight, Zachary Vidal. Caden Batista. Matthew Bell. Caleb Bauer. James Buster. Colton Carter. Jaden Davies. Alexander Evans. Born champion. The C is for the courage I possess through the drama. Elias Green. A is for my attitude, working through the patience. Money comes and goes, so the M is for motivation. Seth The P is to persevere. The I is for integrity, innovative career. The O is optimistic. Dakota Hall. And the N is necessary, because I'm never giving up. See, they asked me how I did it. I just did it from the heart. Crushing the competition. Jonathan Harmon. They say that every champion is all about his principles. Carry. Receiving his GED, Ian Harvester. Receiving his GED, Jordan Henson. Cameron Hessing. Receiving his GED, James Jepson. Daryl Callisto. Yeah. Orion Lesneski. Gabriel Lewis Drake Lockwood Giovanni Lopez Cody Martin Lemoyne Maxwell. Jace May. Nicholas Melnick. Siobhan Mitchell. David Montero. Bryce Mundell. Kelson Murphy. Daniel Newell. Receiving his GED. Evan Lee Olson. Ty Penny. Samuel Plummer. James Purvis. 
break my bones till all my scars bleed golden Chris Rendo Gabriel Rout Ricardo Sanchez Alexander Scherer Kellen Short Alexander Shoemaker Colin Smith Receiving his GED, Tegan Stradley. Jeffrey Tennyson. Receiving his diploma, Raiden Veneman. Riley Ward. Receiving his GED, Sean Warren. Conrad Willems. Travis Williams. From the scout flight. Cameron Benson. Stetson Bernard. Receiving his GED, John Brashear. Receiving his GED, Dakota Brown. Isaac Brown. Receiving his diploma, Jason Bushin. Garrett Cadwalder. Aaron Chastain. Jacob Clement. Wyatt Colvin. Tanner Cook. Javis Friday. Ashton Gallegos. Zach Gardner. Jose Gomez. Receiving his GED, Andrew Howey. Johnson, who is sworn into the National Idaho Guard. Spencer Kimbrough. Aaron Lackner. Receiving his diploma, Fernando Martinez. Cordell Maddox. Braden Neese. Receiving his diploma, Levon Nisby. Receiving his 
receiving his diploma, Porter O'Neill. Receiving his diploma, Quentin Payne. Receiving his diploma, Isaac Presswich. Receiving his diploma, Kobe Reynolds. Jaden Ruiz. Receiving his diploma, Nicholas Scott. Receiving his diploma, Reese Selbach. Sean Silva. Receiving his diploma, Dexter Soroki. Shaden Slifer. Receiving his GED, Jalen Small. Receiving his diploma, Ramiz Somik. Corey Stapp. Mark Stemrich. Alexander Stewart. With the quick views, I was uptight, wanna let loose, I was dreaming of bigger things and wanna leave my old life. Receiving his GED, Jeremy Terry. Ladies and gentlemen, walking across the stage are 1,000 cadet, Nicholas Trejo. Receiving his diploma, Jayton Vandeviver, Vandeviver, and he's also sworn into the National um, Idaho National Guard. Sergio Vera. And receiving his GED, Blade Watkins. It's a long receiving line. All right. Yeah, let's give a big round of applause. This is the part I don't like to do, because then that means we gotta send them home. Congratulations, graduates. Squadron commander, put your squadron in attention and lead your cadets in the IDYCA cadet creed.
squadron commander. Ready? Hey. She's nervous. <laughs> so am I. <clears throat> Cadets, move your tassels from right to left over the heart. Brigadier General Garshak, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you from class 18 TAC 2, the 10th graduating class of the Idaho U Challenge Academy. Please stand. She missed her cue, but that's okay. She's coming up here really quickly. It is now my privilege to introduce Cadet Staff Sergeant Valenzuela, who will deliver the benediction. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for showing each one of us cadets about this program and giving us the strength and motivation to finish strong. We are all now leaving a place which for five months we called home. Today we stand before you, God, asking to continue on the path which you have chosen not only for those around us, but for ourselves. Help the class of 18 TAC 2 stay true to our commitments and goals for the future. Give us the strength to look temptation in the face and say no. I pray that as we depart from this journey that you guide us through the tough decisions I ask that in our darkest times, you remind us what we learned in these last five months. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. So please be seated. We are almost done, I promise. <laughs> Final words. Graduates, more than six months ago, you met one of our admissions counselors, and you were offered the opportunity to take charge of your own life. Today, we assign you the responsibility of offering the same opportunity to young men and women that are now as you were six months ago. Please share your journey with your friends and encourage them to make the choice that you did. I remind the, the graduates to pick up the graduation packets as quickly as possible. Those packets are essential for your next step into the post-residential phase towards your educational and employment opportunities. They contain the actual certificate. If you opened up your folder, there's nothing in there. <laughs> for completion of your Youth Challenge residential phase, your transcripts, diplomas, and a wealth of other crucial elements in chasing your dreams. Please also do not leave without collecting any, any medications you brought with you. Following your final dismissal, there will be a brief 10 to 15 minute photo opportunity with your families in the adjoining room and hallway, which is over here, which is the cafeteria families. So they've been instructed to leave their cap and gown on so you can get that final picture with them. Um, please save any further visiting until after you find your way quickly to the back room to turn in your caps and gowns and collect your gear with v those vital graduation packets. Staff will depart with or without you having checked in no later than 1500. So cadets, your final dismissal. Our program director, Mr. Harv Nelson, has some final words to dismiss the cadets.
your time in the arena. Get in there and we need you to pull. Grab hold of that rope, never let go. You gonna pull? Yes, sir! You're, you're gonna pull? Yes, sir! Let everybody hear, I will never quit. Oh!